The Queen of Oz, Part 3 Pete's jaw dropped and he whirled around. The scarecrow was regarding him calmly. You, you didn't just talk to me, he whispered. A scarecrow didn't just talk to me. The scarecrow laughed, and then the shell of its pumpkin head split apart and began to peel away. Its clothes tore apart at the seams. Its pose split down the middle with a crack, and stepping out of the wreckage was someone who needed no introduction. Of course a scarecrow didn't talk to you, silly, Glinda said, smiling. Even in Oz, that would be a bit ridiculous. Unless, of course, it was the scarecrow, but he doesn't work in the field anymore. Darling, I've been looking for you everywhere. I'm so glad I finally found you. Pete looked around bewildered, as if there were someone else she might be talking to. You've been looking for me? Indeed I have, Glinda said. She was somehow even more beautiful than her sister, her hair just a touch more illustrious, her eyes a clearer and gentler blue, her skin even softer and more radiant. She extended one hand to him and drew a shape in the air with the other. A pink silk tent materialized out of the cool night air. Let's go somewhere a bit more comfortable where we can talk, she said, leading him through an, its open doorway. Inside, soft, velvety cushions were arranging themselves into piles. Pink, beautiful carpets were unrolling themselves across the hard, packed earth of the pumpkin patch. Tea was pouring itself into pink china cups at a little table, and a bowl of pink fruits and pastries appeared out of nowhere. Glinda daintily selected a pink frosted tart and popped it into her mouth. Delicious! she proclaimed. Pete's eyes were wide with awe and shock. She looked at him and smiled. Haven't you seen real magic before, dear heart? She asked in her sweet musical voice. I've seen Mombi's spells, Pete said, shivering at the memory of the spider webs wrapping around their house. Oh, Mombi, Glinda said, as if the name, name pained her. She sank gracefully down into a pile of cushions and patted the ground next to her. Come, we have something to eat and drink and sit and sit with me. We have much to discuss. Pete didn't need to be told twice. He wolfed down several of the pink pastries and drank a cup of tea in one gulp, and then he refilled his plate and cup, remembering that he was in civilized company and sat down next to Glinda, eating more politely for the second helping. Glinda pretended to ignore his uncouthness, but he had a feeling she had noticed and didn't like it very much. He felt embarrassed. I'm sorry, he said. Living out there in the woods with Mombi, I forget. I forget manners sometimes. It was the right thing to say. Glinda brightened, and he immediately felt better. But he had been warned about Glinda most of his life, and getting her approval felt like an up affront to Mombi. He reminded himself that Mombi didn't did just deserve his loyalty, but some parts of him looking around and all the pink that Mombi had described raised some kind of alarm in the sweetness. He pushed the thought aside. He was accustomed to Mombi was all, and no one was as sour as Mombi. Of course, Glinda said. How could you be expected to know any better? Mombi's kept you all locked up like a prisoner. It's lucky I finally found you. You don't even know who you really are, my dear, and if Mombi had let had her way, you never would. Who I really am? Pete asked in confusion. Ha what do you mean? I really have been looking for you forever, Glinda said. For thirteen years, to be precise. It took all that magic and, and cunning I had to figure out where she'd hidden you. Old Mombi was cleverer than I had gave her credit for, I must admit. Her magic has grown far more powerful than it was when she came crawling to me, begging to show her all my secrets. I don't understand, Pete said. Did you know my parents? Do you know where I came from? He had asked Mommy for years about where he came from, who he was. She'd taught him to fear, but she never taught him why. Was Glinda finally going to give him the answers he always wanted? Oh, yes, Glinda said, turning to him and taking his hands in hers. I know all about where you came from and who you are, my dear. The truth is that everything Mommy has told you, your entire life with her, was a lie. You aren't Pete. You're the rightful ruler of Oz, and your time has come. Pete stared at Glinda, his mind reeling. What she was saying didn't make sense at all. 
the rightful ruler of Oz? He asked in bewilderment. But isn't that, isn't that the scarecrow? Glenda laughed dismissively. The scarecrow? That little fool? Heavens no, child. He was only ever meant to be temporary, a temporary solution, and he can't even manage to get that right. Dorothy defeated the wizard, as you know, and sent him away. But she didn't do it just so the scarecrow it could run Oz into the ground. She did it to prepare the throne for you, for when you were ready to rule. And that time, my dear, is now. Mombi has hidden you all away in all these years, trying to make your power for her own, and I finally managed to find you, and she'll never take you from us again, I promise. I don't understand, Pete said slowly. And how could you? You've been kept in the dark your whole life. Shall I start at the beginning, my dear? He bit his lip and nodded. Yes, please, Pete said. Like all the true rulers of Oz, you were born in the Emerald City, Glinda began. You should have grown up there and taken over the throne when you were old enough to rule, but Mombi, who is, I'm afraid to say, a wicked witch, kidnapped you as a tiny child, bringing you away to the north and enchanting you to the, n so that none of the witches who could protect you from her could find you. She raised you there in secrecy and seclusion, and for many years none of us were able to find you. It took your she it took your magic, yes, my dear yours, to escape the circle she had drawn around her cottage and flee from her dark powers. When you set foot in the road of yellow brick, I knew at once that you have come back to us, that you would need me more than you'd ever needed anyone in your life. I am here to protect you, my dear, whatever it takes. I will ensure that the throne returns to you. Pete could hardly form words. He was so shocked. Mombi had been unkind and cruel mo most of his life. But evil? A kidnapper? Glinda had been looking for him for this whole time. What would his life would have been like if he spent it with this kind, beautiful, gentle witch instead of old Mombi? But then you knew my family, he said, and, and as realization dawned. Do I have a family? Are they in the Emerald City? Glinda, who am I? You are the last descendant of Lorraine, the oldest of the fairies, and the rightful ruler of Oz. Glinda looked into his eyes and gave his hands a gentle squeeze. The rightful queen of Oz, she said quietly. You are a fairy, and your name is Ozma. A shock went through Pete at the word Ozma that stared at the cr started at the crown of his head and spread throughout his entire body. Ozma, as soon as he heard it, he knew it was true. Ozma, the word radiated out through him and sank into his very bones. Say the word and I will restore you to your true form, my princess, Glinda said. Tell me you are ready to accept the responsibilities before you. Tell me it is time. But why, why would mommy do that to me? Why would she hide away and raise me to be nothing but afraid of the outside world? For the same reason that everyone does anything, darling, Glinda purred. Power, or in her case, magic. She loves it to the exclusion of everything and everyone else. Pete felt the bristle of truth. Mombi did love magic more than him. She always had. He felt himself making up his mind. He almost laughed, but it caught in his throat. Imagine that. He was never going to going back to the shack in that woods. He was going to have all the magic in Oz. He half wished Mombi could see him take it. Yes, Pete breathed. I'm ready. It's time. Glinda squeezed his hands even more tightly this time, and he felt magic pouring through her body into his like a wave of electricity. And then he felt his body begin to transform. Not just his body, but the very essence of his being. He felt Glinda's magic flooding through him and awakening something inside of him that had been long dormant as if a lockbox were being just opened, but smashed to pieces to release everything that had been inside. He felt power, his own power, the oldest, deepest magic of Oz, coursing through him at last as his bones lengthened and his body altered. The skin in his back felt as though it were burning and splitting open, and then he felt huge golden wings unflooring from his shoulders and spreading wide in a glittering arc of light. And it was then that Pete knew it, all the way down to his bones, what Glinda had said about Pete was true. Ozma had existed before Pete. 
Magic always wants to be something else, and sometimes it makes something new. Pete tried to hold on to Mombi's words, to hold on to himself, but Glinda's light was so very bright. As the transformation completed itself, Ozma fluttered her eyes open. Ozma? A sugary, far-off voice called to her. She blinked hard. Some strange shadow lingered, a tiny voice at the back of her head carrying out in protest, a piece of herself that she recognized as the boy she'd been for her entire life. Pete? She asked out loud, reaching for the name, but not quite understanding its meaning. Pete wasn't real, she told herself. Pete had never existed. Pete was Mobby's creation. Pete was a lie, and she could find his pain and confusion. She could almost hear him. She stretched out her arms. She touched her velvety stop skin. She felt real. The boy was the dream. When she had woken up from, the boy was the spell, she told herself. But she couldn't shake the feeling, no matter how good it felt to be herself again. There was a tiny scream inside her, something that felt separate and constant and distant from her. But there, all the same, she pushed it down. Ozma, Glinda said again gently. Ozma nodded. She was Ozma again at last. Welcome back to us, Princess Ozma, Glinda said. But instead of triumphant, her voice was thoughtful. The transformation spell was so strong, she murmured, her eyes distant. Magic wants to be something else, Ozma mur murmured the words that were not hers. Glinda's perfect eyebrows dotted up in concern. You need to rest. There are echoes of someone else still lingering. I had no idea Mombi had so much power. Perhaps she still, she did not act alone. She blinked and shook herself. Never mind, she said brightly, turning back to Ozma. You have returned, and that is all that matters now. Would you like to see your palace, my dear? My palace? The Emerald Palace, of course, Glinda smiled, delighted by Ozma's surprise. It's yours now, my dear, your true home. As soon as she said it, Ozma knew it was true. The Emerald City, the Emerald Palace, hers, because it was her destiny, because she was the true ruler of Oz, and her time had come at last to take the throne. Ozma took Glinda's hands again and smiled, incredibly grateful to the witch who saved her, who'd seen what she truly was, underneath Mombi's dark magic. Glinda had helped her more than she would ever know, because now the truth, she knew the truth about Oz. Protection was a lie. Trust could be broken. Power twisted those who had it. She was Ozma, and Oz was hers and hers alone, hers to rule to the very best of her abilities. Its people were her responsibility, its health, her calling. No one could ever take that away from her again. Mombi had used her as a pawn to her own ends. Glinda might have restored her to her true self, but she knew better than to trust anyone fully with that kind of power. She was Ozma, the Queen of Oz, and she was never going to be anyone else's prisoner again.